we have uh, I'm present uh, our vice chair John Scooter Saber. SJ Klein present. Steve Horn present. Diana Evans present. Mike Rayberg present. Mike Finster. Bruce Bustamante. Debbie, he's in. Okay. Debbie Rinky. I'm here. Bob French. And Bruce is here. Perfect. And Jim Winchester. Jim, are you on? Okay, looks like Jim is not on yet. So yes, AMS I am. I was muted. Ah, uh, perfect. Sorry. We're good. So I think the only person the attendance. So our public involvement announcement, AMAT's committee meetings are open to the public and the public has provided an opportunity to comment on each meeting. Business items are presented by staff or consultant. After the committee discusses the business item, the public is invited to formally comment. Each participant will have three minutes to speak on their topic. So I don't know if I'm assuming everyone received the agenda, so I would need a motion to approve the agenda. I move to approve. I get a second. Second. Are there any objections to approving the agenda or are there any uh, changes? Hearing no objections, the agenda is approved. Next, we need to approve the meeting minutes of April 26. Can I get a motion to approve those minutes? If someone did make a motion, they were probably muted. The Steve Horn, I, I yeah. Okay, a second. I'll second. Thank you. Are there any corrections? Are there any objections to approving the April 26 minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. So we have no action items. So anything that's brought up in this meeting uh, will be for discussion purposes, but no uh, no action by the CAC unless we have it on the agenda uh, with a minimum of three days. No. Seven. seven days notice. Just reminder to everyone, we need a minimum of seven days notice if we want a formal action item. So moving to projects and plan updates, 6A, the 2023-2026 TIP, uh, Transportation Improvement Program. Eric? <laughs> okay, I just want to give you a quick update on where we're at with the TIP. So uh, the TIP's gone through a pretty lengthy process over the last few months to get nominations, uh, scoring and ranking, and then develop the TIP that we have online is the interagency draft. We just did the interagency draft consultation. Uh, with resource agencies as well as the air quality conformity determination, which is still out for public comment until August 1st. Once that comment period is closed, we'll take any of those comments to the TAC and policy committee for final approval of the document in August. Once that's done, we'll submit it to FH, uh, DOT, FHW and FTA for final approval on there. So we're wrapping it up and coming to uh, the start of a brand new tip that has a lot of very exciting projects in there. So. I'm here if you guys have any questions. Thank you, Aaron. We'll open the floor up if there's any questions for the 
There's no committee. But I have uh, interagency consultations that I have to do with resource agencies. And then there's an air quality conformity determination. And so we call it interagency. Right here. I'm not sure if someone has a wrapper on a candy bar or a water bottle, but it's coming through as pretty heavy noise. Thank you. Did you have any more questions, Danny? No, I just missed that. Do we have any other questions for Aaron? Ask Jay his hand up. Go ahead, Go ahead. SJ. Go ahead, SJ. You can hear us. You're muted. Great. Can you guys hear me okay without the candy wrapper? Yes. You're very loud. Okay. And clear. Super. All right. Um, yeah, my only question was if the uh, CAC does want to make comment on the tip to be included in the packet. Um, is that something that commissioners want to do or uh, should we just make comment individually? And if we were to do it, we would have to have a special meeting apparently in the next five days. Oh, nope, too late for that, I guess. So we'll open the floor to the CAC and I'm assuming when, when you're referring to commissioners, you're referring to the CAC. That's yeah, that's it. correct. Uh, does anyone have a strong opinion for or against? So, so do my, I guess I do need clarification. So we had a major amendment. Uh, we are well past the point of comment with 2023, 2026 tip. Is that incorrect? Uh, the comment period on the actual tip itself is closed a while ago. Well, the comment period that's open right now is on the air quality conformity determination itself. So that's the determination that says, will this project impact the air quality measures that are in the statewide implementation plan. They're called traffic control measures. So they're uh, transit marketing, transit ride share, fan pool, um, and then the uh, air quality education and business education campaign. Sorry, I get the name off, but um, so it basically says, are the projects in the tip going to negatively impact or prevent us from being able to continually implementing those and help air quality throughout our region? When we talk about air quality, we're only talking about PM10 or CO, also PM2.5, but we don't have a PM2.5 problem here. Um, we're not talking about greenhouse gas emissions because that's not a part of the EPA's air quality conformity requirements. So SJ, uh, this is just my opinion, is uh, I think it's really important that if you have these quarterly meetings, uh, and I think if we're in the period of a uh, public comment, that we get those action items on the agenda. I think those are good items to have to take action as the CAC body right there. But if we do miss those deadlines, uh, unless there's uh, ex special circumstances, I would think that the commissioners or the individual CAC representatives would submit comments themselves. That's my opinion, but uh, anyone else have an opinion about it? Great, I, this is SJ, I just appreciate the clarification. Uh, from Aaron. Aaron, can you educate or educate me on the uh, air quality? You said 2.5 uh, particulate matter. What's what was the other one? PM10. PM10. So 10 microns, 2.5 yeah. microns, or CO. Um, and so in our AMATS area, CO is well below the national standard. So we're so far below, we won't run into any exceedances on that one. PM 2.5, so that's wood smoke. Uh, we don't have any issues right now. We hope to never develop any issues or air quality exceedances on that. And PM 10 is the fine grain road dust. That's the Where are the sensors? Or two Where? and downtown. I think there's only two of them left. Um, and it's in the document. I don't remember the second one offhand. There were three. There were in there four back in the day. We're basically because we are doing a good job at keeping ourselves below our threshold on air quality within our region, the sensors have kind of been going away over time. It's also because the business owners have been removing their approval of keeping it on buildings because we have the sensors on top of buildings to be able to capture the data. 
and over time, business owners have changed hands and they basically, we don't want this on the roof anymore, find somewhere else to put it. Um, and so uh, the wood, the wood salt, like I said, we don't have a problem with here, but the road dust, we do have problems with here. Uh, we're keeping it under control by using the magnesium chloride brine that we spray in those instances before sweep, uh, sweeping is done, or when we know like an inversion is happening or going to happen, we get out there and spray it so it keeps the dust from coming up during that inversion. Um, and we as AMF pay for that, and we put a lot of money and effort towards it with the municipality of Anchorage and the state of Alaska working on that, as well as paving of unpaved facilities. So that's why we typically don't do unpaved facilities as AMATs because they contribute to air quality concerns with the road dust that's brought up because of the unpaved portions of them. Do we have any additional questions for the 2023-26 uh, tip for Aaron? Hearing none, we'll move to 6B. An update on the 2050 uh, MT, uh, Metropolitan Transportation Plan. I, I really quickly, I do want to say thank you all for your involvement in the 23 through 26 tip. I know everyone provided comments in some way, shape, or form, uh, and I appreciate your guys' involvement. We did get a lot of comments on the document. We got a lot of projects nominated, um, and I'll explain more on the MTP kind of how that relates. We had over 150 projects nominated for the tip, which is pretty enormous, um, but not as much to the MTP. So. The 2050 MTP, um, where are we at? So you can go to our website. We did have our project nomination period that ran from May 10th through July 11th. Um, so we got comments on the interactive map, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, we carried forward any of the projects that were nominated for the TIP but not included in there. Uh, the project team sat down and looked at the 2040 MTP projects and made recommendations to nominate certain projects from there, a set of projects from there. I took the top three eligible projects from the CIP lists. Please recognize that not all projects on the CIP list are eligible because are, are eligible for inclusion because they include things that are non-transportation related that we cannot pay for. Like median landscaping, for example, is a standalone project. We don't pay for that as part of AMAX or even really as part of the Muni CIP list. They may, but it's not transportation related. So please recognize if you don't see that on the lists, there's a reason it's not on there. Uh, there were a lot of duplicate projects as well on the CIP list, so we just carried it forward, and but we're only going to show one project on them. We're not going to show five of the same projects. In total, um, we had almost 900 comments or nominations with all of these included. Oh, and we took all of the high priority non motorized plan uh, bike and pit projects, including the HSIP high priority, which is about 130, 150 projects in total. Um, so we have a lot of projects that were nominated or comments that were given to us on the nomination process. Right now, I am organizing all of the projects and getting them ready for the project team to score. Um, I have done most of them except for the interactive map projects. I still have about 400 of those left to do uh, by Monday. So I'll be working a long weekend to get those ready to go. Uh, then the next steps, the project team will be scoring the projects and getting things ready for the next steps, which will be looking at the scored projects and making recommendations on projects to carry forward and, or to use for the 2050. There'll be lengthy public involvement uh, or some public involvement opportunities. Um, there'll be work sessions and other things like that. Uh, but we have a couple of months of scoring that the project team has to do. So just kind of bear with us as we get through it. Aaron, who's on the uh, scoring team? It's the project team. Who is the project team? I'm not really going to say because I don't like people harassing the project team. So it's the MTP project team. It's made up of DOT, UNI folks, and AMAX folks. Is that not public information? Not really. I mean, it is kind of, but not really. I don't think we've ever really said who's all on the project team, but it's planners, um, pretty much planners, and then the uh, consultant team itself. So the consultants won't be doing any of the scoring, but it'll be all the planners. And that includes like people from planning, transit, 
others. So um, I've been a little cagey because we've had in members of the public who like to try and talk to members of the scoring committees to find out why they scored a project a certain way. And I don't really appreciate that. So I'm trying to keep it a little more close fisted on that regard. Okay. Um, so really quickly, if you go to our AMAT website, amat2050.com, you can actually go down here to see what comments were received. And you scroll down, you can either look at the Met interactive map that's right here. I like to open it directly because it's easier. So this is one of the ways that we had people submit comments to us using this interactive map. Um, we had a pretty successful run with it, honestly, getting 533 comments on its own. Uh, in the time period that we had it open. So I want to thank everyone for their input. Um, and you can go through here and kind of see how things were broken down. The vast majority of comments that were received regarding safety or connections or routes. So the red and the blue. I know it's hard to see on the screen there because it's a little funky. But what's really nice is you're like, OK, I want to see this comment. So it kind of zooms into the location of what they're talking about. And then you can see what their comment was. Yeah. So what we're doing, basically, what I'm doing right now is taking these comments and turning them into projects. As close as I can, I'm just taking the comment and putting that forward as a project description to give to the project team so they can score on ranking. Is there any comments on Jager? <clears throat> I mean, if there were, I could forward to Jager. It's really there is one right there for which to engage. Did you make an interactive map with where the stakeholders uh, reside? No, because you can pretty much see it from. Well, I mean, no, we didn't ask. Because <coughs> you asked that was one of the questionnaires when you put that in is where do you live? We don't have it in this year, but we could probably look. But you did compile that data. I mean, downtown looks like it's got it. Well, that's just where people provide comments. That's not um, where they live. I right, where the comments doesn't. I mean, I think I owe I think I have the responsibility as a board member to know the comments that are inside my area. Uh, let, alone the, let alone some of the other ones. We did gather the zip code data. Um, so I can look at it. I can talk to the consultant team or the consultant to see if we can compile. Um, the question of more is, does it correspond to the zip codes correspond to the comments that were made? Or were they comments made by other zip codes? Like did, that's really what I was trying to get at. I mean, from what I can tell with the plants, their comments within the AMS bound, like the zip codes are within the AMS boundary. So it's not like people from Seattle making the comments. No. But uh, I don't know. I don't have the ability to tell you if all the comments you see in downtown were made by a downtown person. Exactly. That's what I was curious. Of. Yeah. And we don't really, we don't really judge that. We don't score that as part of our score. But I'll talk to the consultant and see if we can develop participation. That's actually more what I was curious. Like, uh, so I'll use CER for Chugiak Eagle River right there. Is I'm curious. Did Chugiak Eagle River participate, or were those comments that were put from uh, Anchorage residents put those comments? That's what I was curious. If this was an effective tool that had more engagement from the people that actually live in that community, that was, I wanted feedback of interactive map works. Uh, you had a higher level of engagement. I do know we did receive a good number of comments for Chugiak Eagle River area that are not in the interactive map that were received outside of the interactive map from residents in that area. So. Just know that this is only the interactive map. We didn't get a whole lot of them outside of the interactive map, so I'm yep. very happy with that. But um, I'll see what the consultants can come up with because it's good information to show here. If it's, it may already be on here, and I'm just too dumb to know where it is. But I'll ask them too. Thank you. Yeah. Like safety being on the uh, high chart. You should never see safety having that. It's interesting. Do we have any other questions or comments about the 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan? I'm, uh, I find it interesting. Uh, Just the high percentage of safety comments yeah, that were submitted. Yeah, high percentage. 
I, I guess I need to really go on there and uh, take a look at some of the outcomes. I don't think it's that uncommon. We've been hearing from people for years about safety concerns throughout, especially for non-motorized users. I don't think that's the majority of the comments yeah. I have come across. I'm only 170 comments in, so I still have a lot to go. But of the safety ones, they've been primarily non-motorized users, especially at intersections. So pedestrian, oh, pedestrian is higher, or are we just hearing more of, of the... Yeah, pedestrian injuries and fatalities are higher than bike. We have, we have pretty high here in the Anchorage area compared to the rest of the state. So it's one of our primary concerns to look at that as we move forward. So I'm kind of glad to see a ton of safety comment, safety stuff on here because it's giving us these points that we can look at and be like, here are areas of concern that the public has been raising. What does the data show? Okay, if the data is not showing it, then what's missing? Or can we still do something even if we don't have the data? Did it go? So do you think it's prior to the, the um, public workshop and stuff, you'll have kind of summaries or trends of comments? Exactly. Any it's kind like of that. narrative that will help people kind of comprehend it as a whole instead of maybe 1,400 comments? Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this because really, the only thing this is here for is just to see what people nominated or recommended for nomination. The next thing you're going to see from us is the list of projects. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, because for us, that's the big thing is we really need to move into the, the project nomination process uh, to do kind of the, like a data dump of here's how, here's what people nominated. Uh, we can try, but it pretty much just looking at the chart you can kind of see in the interactive map what the primary focus people had on were things, safety and connections. I would make a comment. To, I totally understand, Aaron, that for uh, your set path right here, ultimately all that matters for you is nominations. But with how much input, especially with this, uh, there's just so much data right here, and you'd think there'd be a value, at least with, to my understanding, AMAS has a goal with community engagement, and this is a great roadmap of community engagement right there, what's working and what isn't. So I would hope that data is, uh, at least someone's extrapolating that data. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a list of all of our engagement activities as part of the MCP, and this will be included in there. But in terms of a narrative explaining, here's the direction that we're hearing from the public, that will probably be part of our project nominations as we go forward and say, okay, based on what we heard from people, I just don't know if we're going to have a report out that goes in detail about, okay, here's all the breakdown and everything. I can ask the consultants and see if there's something that they can do a quick, maybe one pager or two page review of this interactive map that kind of gives some of those high level safety was the biggest concern we heard from people with this number of projects or comments that were heard or something like that, that kind of takes this and put it into a narrative format that might help. Um, I, it's just, it's kind of a pain because we got a lot of comments as well, not just nominations. Like, for example, I had 10 comments about how the Merrill field needs to be removed because roads are in the runway safety zone and it's a hazard. So, you know, airports are kind of outside of our, our purview. And that kind of comment doesn't really lead to a nomination that's easy for me to extrapolate what to do for it. So it's, you know, this is very high level. So I'll talk to the consultants. Perfect. Well, just one more on that, Aaron. So you said you had 900 comments that weren't on the map and those aren't in the pie chart? No, we had nine, almost 900 comments total, including the 533 from here. So that's 400 more. Oh, a little less, like three, three sixty, something like that. That, that are not in the pie chart mm -hmm. either, because that would be. I mean, if you're going to have a pie chart, it's just going to have it on the whole. Well, yeah, the I whole mean, set. that's because they weren't, they weren't mapped comments, because they were given to us outside of the interactive map. So we were just showing the interactive map for people to take a look at here. Well, that's that's just my comment. I think if you're going to present statistics. 
find something like this, you see these all comments that just the ones that people submitted to the OM. I, I, I do understand we have a limited amount of time to resource for the project, unfortunately. So the question I've been asked a couple times is I missed the deadline right there. Uh, in years coming, would, will there ever be an opportunity again to submit projects to the 2050? Um, no, not really. Um, because our next update is going to be starting in like two years. So it'd be the gotcha. It'll be the next version of the next. There'll be an opportunity. Well, but the next one's going to be an interim update, so I don't know if we're going to do. That's what I was curious. In two years, when they do an update, would would there be the opportunity to add projects? That's really the question that I I wasn't sure about. I mean, interim updates typically don't add projects. They just kind of reaffirm everything that we're heading in the right direction and or set performance targets. Um, so I don't know. At this point, unfortunately, I will not be the project manager for the next MTP update. The new staff we're hiring, hopefully at the end of this month, will be the project manager. So it'll be up to them. You hired them yet? They don't start until yet. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Hearing none, we're moving to 60 Transportation Systems Management and Operations, the TSML. OK, so this is one of my projects as well. So this is the Transportation System Management and Operations Project that I'm working, TISMO. This is um, something that's done in the lower 48 that we are working on here. Um, basically, think of it as a way to help manage the transportation system for congestion without necessarily having to focus on large scale highway improvements. So you may be looking at things that are um, uh, technology based or other options that can be like, okay, you know, we recognize that there might be a congestion issue at some point here, instead of expanding the highway or roadway, why don't we see if there are other options we can do that are technology based or high impact, sometimes low cost, but not always, uh, that we can do as a way to help mitigate the need for expansion improvements until later down the road, way back all. Um, so that could be things like maybe developing an HOV lane on the Glen Highway or some kind of other metered lane on the Glen Highway. Uh, it's a variety of different options or technology solutions uh, that we are looking at as part of this project. So we are doing this for the AMAX area. Uh, we are in the kind of early stages of this project. We are just doing the vision statement and goals development at this point with the project team. Our technical advisory group is helping us with that. And I just wanted to give you all a quick heads up that this project's coming and there will be a public, uh, what do we call it, an open house in September, I believe. Yeah, that's August, September. September is when we're going to have it. It'll be a little different than open houses we've done in the past where it's a staff say to walk people through it. Instead, we're going to actually do kind of a self-guided open house where people can walk through a presentation or data that we provide, you know, documents that we provide, they can peruse it at their leisure. And then they can submit comments or questions on it and then staff can go and answer those comments in a pretty timely manner. So be on the lookout for that. We will send out notice for that once that uh, happens. I think, sorry, I know you have a question. I think in mid August, we're planning on sending out notices about it and we want to get it to the SEC and everything like that so the community councils can know about it. We did want to wait on the open house until the community council started meeting again in the beginning of September. So are you the PM of this and you're working with the consultant or is this, okay, so there is a consultant with this one too. Yes, yes, there is. Uh, DKS and Associates, they're a pretty big consulting firm from the lower 48 who's routinely worked on TISMOs for other groups. Two things really quickly, just so you guys know, TISMOs in the past have historically been for DOTs. They don't, they're, unless you're a really large regional MPO of millions of people, they haven't historically been used for smaller MPOs like ours. Uh, so it's kind of a new thing for them to be coming in and working with an MPO like ours. 
Uh, and then there's two things that we're asking them to integrate as part of this. One is land use into whatever they talk about through here, which they don't routinely do because they're DOT driven plans and uh, equity. Talking about how we can use TISMO to help with the equity side of transportation. So we're going to try and get some performance measures from them that we can integrate into the future MTP updates that can help us meet that equity side of things. Thank you. So they're going to be coming. The consultants are. You're going to be coming up with a list of mitigating ideas, and then you'll on your open house you'll go over those ideas that are come up. Are there? Are, would there be an opportunity for suggestions for ideas or is. Yeah, yeah, the open house is an option. I don't know if we're going to necessarily have a list of mitigation tools at the open house. I think the open house is more of a here's what TISMO is and here's why TISMO. Oh, OK, gotcha. And because we want to get that groundwork set first um, and also talk about what our, you know, really briefly, I think what the goals and vision statement is um, and then really kind of get people primed or later in the project. It's only about a year long. We're going to be doing this project, so it's a pretty quick one. Uh, but we want to get everyone kind of aware of it. And then I think later on when we actually have these list of it, it's an implementation plan for doing. So when we have these implementation projects, measures, whatever we call them, uh, that'll be out for the public to be able to review and provide comments. You're more than welcome to provide recommendations at any point. You can go to our website here and you can sign up to receive uh, project updates. You can send me an email if you have recommendations you think we should look at, uh, because then I can forward those to the consultant and be like, hey, when we get to this stage, look at these and see it's based on public feedback. Two other questions. Will this cover CER too? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's the whole thing covered. Okay, and the uh, second one is silly question. I'm just trying to understand some of these different uh, programs. Where's the funding come from this program? So the plan is from AMATS. And any implementation can be from anywhere. You know, predominantly it's probably going to be AMS funded out of a TIP. Um, but DOT. Is it tip? That's what I was curious. Is yeah. this a TIP funded project? So the plan is a TIP funded okay, project. Okay, that's what I was curious. Okay, thank you. That's what I was getting at. But then any implementation that comes from this can be anyone can select it and fund it. So DOT can do it, the Muni, AMS. It's more than likely going to be AMS continuing the funding to implement these things. But uh, who knows? Thank you. So what happens if uh, through this, okay. you come up with a, a good idea for some mitigation, but uh, there's a project on the MTP that says build roads. Like, do you have some kind of cross way to cross over and use the TISMO information to affect I think you yeah, you know, yes, but because right now, unfortunately, TISMO and MTP are kind of off sync with each other, um, we aren't going to have recommendations from this TISMO plan until after we've already done the project list for the 2050 MTP. Um, so it may not be necessarily for the 2050 MTP that will completely inform everything, but hope the, our hope is for future MTPs is that we can take implementations from TISMO and integrate them into the 2050. Now, if there's some big thing that we find right now in this development, we can at least share that with the, the TAC and policy committee while we're developing the MTP, and then they can make the decision on what they do. So they're like, okay, here's a big sewer highway project that we want to do. And then some other options. But we're not in kind of the final stages of the TISMO plan. I'm going to have to leave that up to the TAC and policy committee to decide what they want to do. Do they want to wait until the TISMO plan is final and then make adjustments or just or, or what? Or make adjustments on the fly. So it weren't a little bit of a weird problem with the 2050. I hope I didn't confuse you. <laughs> no, but um, like you can and you can amend the MTP during, you know, outside of the set approval and possibly through the TAC. So I'll, uh, well, I've been getting questions on this and I just want to make sure everyone understands what an amendment takes for the MTP. An amendment takes eight to 12 months to get done for the MTP and about 100,000 staff time to get done. We are basically always in the middle of an MTP update. As soon as this MTP update is done in 2024, that year, technically even before the approval is done, we're starting the update for the next MTP. 
There is never not a time when we are not updating the MTP because of federal process requirements. We have to update it every four years, and it takes us three to four years to update. And so, kind of another question is: uh, so a lot of times, uh, federal money, you know, if you don't spend it how we said you were going to get penalized. So, what is the Gizmo somehow made that if you, you start doing a MP MPP project and then you get swerve off? And do something that the Gizmo recommends. It's all considered the same money, or no? Like, if it's a project that you've already started, like to add a lane of travel on a road, and you get down in the design, you're like, we don't need this. We want to do something else. You can't take that money and use it on something else. You basically have to close out that project, and are possibly penalized, possibly not. And then you have to start a different project with different money. To do that is more related one. So you, you can't really do the cross. You can probably take some ideas from Tismo and integrate them into projects. That's no problem. But you you can't really stop and then shuffle the money over to something else. It's, you're kind of set once you you're set on that project once you start. And I'll say that's why we're very careful about starting projects. You know, we're in the middle of Stopping a couple of them right now, MLK extension, for example, is being looked at at closing it out and uh, having to deal with the repercussions of that. Do we have any more questions? Hey, Aaron, this is this is SJ. I've got a question uh, for Aaron um, about the Gizmo, if I may. Okay. So uh, I was kind of looking through on your explaining Tismo page on the website, some examples of ITS, uh, the intelligent transportation systems that you're developing for it. Um, and one of the one of the little subsections says pedestrian and bicyclist detection. Um, what are you doing there? And like what data is being collected now? What is expected to be collected and how do you intend to use it? I don't know. We're not at that part of the project. As I said, we're just in the goals and vision statement at this point. So if you have a comment about that, then please send it to me and I can forward it to the consultant team and we can look at that as we get to that part of the project. I will do that. Thanks. Thank you, SJ. Do we have any more comments? Hearing none, we're going to move to general information. I, I don't have any general. Is there anyone that has some general information we should be aware of? Moving to committee comments. Uh, this would be a great time to also discuss uh, things that we would like to take action on coming up. Yeah, I guess I get a, a question. So by the time of our next meeting, should we be should there be something in the MTP that we would be, it's the timing to, that the public comment period would be open on it? That we should be thinking about that? I'm not sure I'll have to let you guys know this would be closed. I don't know at this point. So I, maybe we can make a blanket statement of, uh, usually you guys are fantastic, but any public comment periods that are coming up, uh, just to give, you always do we'll just give the CAC a reminder so that if we do want to have a either special meeting or include it on an actual item that it does coincide with that uh, time frame that we do. And you guys already are not saying you're not. <laughs> do we have any other committee comments? I have a general sort of a question or comment. Um, um, I'm not super clear when it comes to implementation and making projects happen. Um, when projects are in approval and they're in the pipeline here, if there's federal funding appropriated for it, is it still up to the legislature to appropriate the funds to make the project happen? That is, does the legislature still have veto power over projects that are in these plans and that are funded federally? I don't know if anyone has ideas on the process. I mean, yeah. Or does it happen? Are you saying really to the governor? Do. The governor could veto the state's portion. The governor could veto, right? 
for AMAX's portion, there's not really a veto authority because it's a sub allocation that comes to us and they're required to give it to us. They can't be like, we, we want to give it to somebody else. In the past, the legislature has tried to get legislative members on our policy board. They actually wrote a state statute requiring us to add at least one or two members of there. We sued them and they lost because they can't require AMATS to update our policy board members without like us as AMATS coming together and making that decision. So the legislature doesn't have a whole lot in that regard in terms of veto of our funding. In terms of DOT's funding, uh, I'll have to turn that over to Mr. Starzik here to provide any comments because I've been out of the game over at DOT for a while, so I don't want to speculate. Uh, uh, James Starzik, at DOT Planning. Um, there's called line item appropriations uh, in the budget, and uh, you know, on line item uh, appropriation. Individual projects are now in there, so individually funded, state funded projects can be deleted. Um, um, through the budgetary process. So that's from state funding only, but anything coming federally, the legislature is required to appropriate the federal award. That can. Well, there's a, the match portion. Uh, of oh, the match is, can be is a line item. withheld. Uh, the reason I asked you um, is I wasn't clear on process, and I know in our district, we saw a couple of transportation projects vetoed by the governor two weeks ago. So I was wondering, I don't know if, I didn't look to see if they're part of this planning process or if they're in this pipeline, but it, made, it did make me curious if there's sort of a, a veto or, or something out there that can stop a project from happening. And if it's something that this committee should be thinking about or talking about, like if we start seeing projects that don't happen because they're being stopped at the state level or at the legislative level or at the governor's level, if that's something that's our business to talk about because it seems to go contrary to the planning process. Well, I mean, there are projects that can be stopped based on political um, discussions for members of the community, for example. Um, AMATS has the Fish Creek Trail project that's connecting from Northern Lights to the Coastal Trail mm -hmm. along the Alaska Railroad corridor. Um, there's a property owner who's encroaching on the Alaska Railroad property where we want to put that trail who has told us to go find another spot for it that's gonna cost significantly more money. Um, for example, we would be up on the bluff where his property is encroaching. He wants us to go to the uh, other side, the east side, um, and force people to go there. The problem is, is that would require, require us to put a tunnel under the railroad. Um, in order to build that tunnel, we have to build a separate railroad track or during the construction of the tunnel under the railroad, the railroad has to be in continuous operation 24 seven. So we'd have to build separate railroad track to divert the railroad around so we can build the tunnel and then continue building the project. So it, it's a huge increase of cost on the project and can be pretty detrimental. So that's an example where a project can be negatively impacted from forces that are outside of kind of the legislature's veto powers. Um, so and there's always. I mean, the policy committee to get yeah. three members to say, yep. let's discontinue this project. And, yeah. And, and yeah, that's still part of this process, though, right? Yeah, part that's, of this process. that's that's, that's state, endogenous. At, at state level, you know, the, all those projects are in the state, yeah. the, the state transportation program. Uh, I mean, there's a similar. There's a similar comment and review process and amendment process with the state. Um, uh, parallel to the, the okay my concern is mainly outside and you know political or whatever other influence that comes in but yeah, something from inside the process i i don't think i have a concern with that because there's a that's transparent okay all right i'll look into it more i'll look at those projects more and see if they were on the plan and try to get my head around it and the SNP amendment for uh, yes. should be coming out uh, you read my mind. That, 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 okay, I was just gonna ask about that. Is that something you'd invite CAC uh, comment on, or do you? 
Uh, it, it's it's just an open public comment period. Um, so it makes no difference if the CAC no. don't have a comment yeah. period. Yeah. Right. Uh, I believe the plan is 30 days. All right, well, thanks. I might bring this up again at our next meeting for the board to talk about um, just to see where we fit. Thanks. So question on uh, all this additional federal funding that's coming through. I know there's a lot of uh, grant funding, you know, bridges were a priority. Is that going to be passed through to the municipality, states? Will AMETs have, uh, is there any new information on like the American Rescue Act and how those grant, those dollars will be distributed? I don't know. I'm not going to I don't know anything about it. But all the grants that are coming from IJA, uh, AMAT staff doesn't have the ability to actually apply for the grants themselves if it's anything outside of the planning side of things. Because of how we're funded, we're fully federally funded with PL planning funds. Uh, I did talk to FHWA headquarters and they did say we can only apply for grants that implement the transportation planning process. So if it's a planning grant and planning only, nothing else, we as a mass staff can apply for it. Anything else has to be applied for by somebody else. Gotcha. So it'll be the state or the municipality separately. Yeah, even if we did as AMETs apply for a planning grant, it would still have to go through the municipality of Anchorage because we as AMETs don't have the required documentation needed to apply for some of these grants. Because you have to have like an EIN number, employee identification number, and a bunch of other things to fill out the grants as part of the grants.gov. Um, and we have to go through OMB to make sure they're okay with us applying for it and all that kind of stuff. So it all goes through the municipality of Anchorage anyways. Uh, but if people have questions about grants, what's applicable, how they apply, that kind of stuff, they can contact us at AMATS and we can do our best to help them. Thank you. Do you know of anybody in the uh, Do you know of any plans at the to take advantage? It's all going through Lance Wilbur. So I heard too. I heard. So I've been, if somebody's been asking me questions, I've been responding with my spiel I just gave you guys in written format. And then sending it all to Lance Wilbur so we can take a look at it and kind of get everything together. I'm not aware of what grant they are. Thank you. But uh, I will say I do need to be aware of it because they have to be in the MTP in the ticket. That's the other thing. Yeah, so, you mentioned that anything that's receiving has to be listed in there. And yeah. It's quite the process to get something. Yeah. It can be a problem. And so that's why I've been trying. And Lance has been good at keeping me in the loop of as far as I know, if he's applying for anything. Um, and then DOT, we've been working with DOT, um, the, the coordinator for DOT at the governor's office or whatever it is, has been keeping aim at myself in the loop of what the discussions for these things. So I, I can use an example. Uh, so since you were talking about vetoes, so we had Starter Bridge on there, the governor vetoed 1.5. So obviously we might pursue other avenues for funding right there. And if we were able to apply for a federal grant, that project would be need. It would need to be listed on MTP. Is that correct? What's the project again? Sorry. Uh, the replacement of Starter Bridge. Uh, it's the alternate route between uh, North Peters Creek and Shugak. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, if it's if it receives any kind of federal FHWA grant. Um, it would need to be a MTIP in the MTP. Gotcha. If it's receiving like an FTA grant or other things like that, there's limits on what has to be in our TIP. So find out funding source options depending on what our projects are. And based off of the funding source, we would probably need to contact Aaron to see if there was a process to get something potentially. I understand it's a nightmare, but. So um, it's always in the application or the notice of funding opportunity for the grant. It will tell you if it needs to be in the long range plan, the MPO plan. It'll 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 say some of these kind of keywords to look out for and it'll let you know if it needs to be in there. And so far from what I can tell, unless James can correct me, I think all of them require it to be consistent with the MTP or the TIP, which consistent kind of has different meanings of what that means, but um, if people have questions, they can come. Uh, just to kind of put a point on Bill, I think the I think there is some 
um, consideration for the intent to have it added to the MTP. So if it's not necessarily in the MTP, but you can say there's a good faith effort to get it in, yeah, uh, they're they're okay with that. Yeah, I'll clarify on that. Sorry, I I, I shouldn't use broad strokes like this. Uh, the requirement is is that it has to be in the tip in the MTP when you go to get the money from FHWA. So putting in the application, you can say, you know, we're going to be working on getting this into the MTP in the tip, or it's already underway, or something like that. Say you get approved for the grant, and then you get to the point where FHWA is about to write the check. They check with us. They verify with AMAT whether this project is in the tip of the MTP. If it's not, it needs to be added in or you won't get the money. So that's why I, I'm kind of like, it needs to be in the tip of the MTP on like Chicken Little, basically being like the sky is falling, get it in there. The sooner you get it in, the better, because then you don't have to scramble like we just did with the air cargo storage facility on the airport, where they got it in 2020 told me about it in February, and I had to work with staff to race and get it into the MTP. <laughs> and so it was a huge problem. So I'm telling people this to just kind of get you motivated to, you know, start early asking these questions or finding out what to do. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is don't let the fact that it's not in the tip and the MTP stop you from applying yep. to begin with. Do we have any committee members looking to make a comment? Hearing none, we'll move to public comments. Is there anyone in the public that has a comment or a question? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good one else, Jay. You know, one of these days.